And what is consciousness? Oh, don't ask a scientist. They would say, don't talk to me about that, or we have no idea. Or, it's a byproduct of the chemical soup of the brain. Whatever they say, they don't know. So most science doesn't even go there. It's what denies the existence of consciousness. There is no consciousness. Well, who is talking? Uh, <laughs> consciousness is the essence of the universe. And it's not yours or mine. There's a vastness of consciousness that you are a manifestation of. Consciousness is, can be described as, Jesus used very interesting words. He said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. What could that mean? He was not referring to the, the fact that the people he was talking to were VIPs, they were not. He was talking about something else. You are the, that what is the light of the world? The light of the world obviously is consciousness. So the consciousness that you, the important thing now is, are you able to sense this deeper essence that connects you to the vastness of consciousness, the universal consciousness, and the, the very source of all life that conventionally we call God. Consciousness, I, the analogy I use often for con how consciousness originates is the light of the sun. The sun emanates continuously light. Well, we call it light. It emanates light continuously, it pours out. Yes, the sun has a certain lifespan, but as far as humans are concerned, the sun is virtually eternal. And it continuously pours out light. And the, this gives physical life to the universe. And it emanates from the sun. And in the same way, God, and God is not an entity in space or time. You can't say, where is God? You can't look. I mean, God is transcendent to this universe. It transcendent. You can't even, even talking about God would be quite meaningless, but I'm doing it anyway. God is transcendent to this universe, and does, has, does not have a location in space, but God is the essence of all, of all being, of all life. God is being itself, you could say. Everything else is existence, it's, it manifests, exist, stands out. But prior to that, there's the being of the universe. So there's the, the universe itself, one could say, the ancients in, ancient, in antiquity, they had a term that in Latin is anima mundi, the soul of the world. There's a, the universe has a, an, there's an unseen, we could say, vast intelligence or organizing principle behind all, all phenomena in the universe. The, and the ancients described it as anima mundi, the soul of the world. And the soul of the world, this vast intelligence that gradually seems to come into this dimension and create life in the dimension of time here, time which ultimately in itself does not exist, but here it seems to exist and it creates increasingly complex and slowly awakening life forms in this dimension. And so this consciousness is in, in the same way that the sun emanates light, the source of all life, which we, we could call God, emanates consciousness, that, that is the light of God. 
consciousness, which means when you can sense within yourself this consciousness, when the mind stops, what remains is an alert presence, one could say, a stillness, but a, an alert stillness. It's hard to talk about it. At, at first, it seems to be nothing. And yet, it is a presence. If I ask you, what does it feel like to be you without your story, without memory of your past or anything? What does it feel like to be you when you let go of the story, the narrative of me and my life and all my memories? Because when you're not thinking, there's no memory. So let's, for a moment, do this experiment as we are letting go of past and future because they are ultimately mental creations. We let go of past and future right now. We also, of course, let go of narratives of me, whatever. Your past becomes irrelevant in this moment. Your past, your whether you're a man or woman becomes irrelevant, your age becomes irrelevant, your race becomes irrelevant in this moment. And what is left of you? What does it feel like to be you, I, you, without the story? Are you still there? That's the interesting. Are you still there? Because there is, there is a consciousness there. There's no doubt about that. And the consciousness is still able to perceive. It's, it's the background to all sense perceptions. And there's this, a, a deep stillness is there. Oh, in this moment, you become free of yourself. <laughs> the self will come back, don't worry. You become free of yourself. That's what the Buddha was talking about. Be free of yourself and something else is there suddenly. It's not... We, what you call it doesn't matter. The Buddha called it the no self. And in ancient Indian spirituality, it's called the self, Atman, not the personal self, but the deeper self that is one with universal self. Or in some form of Buddhism, they use the term Buddha nature. It is the discovery of your Buddha nature that connects you to the vast intelligence of the divine. Or in mystical Christianity, it's called the Christ within. So you, there's even a sentence in one of the letters of Paul in, in the New Testament, where he says something like, unfortunately I can't remember quotes very easily, so I have to paraphrase. He says, I must diminish so that Christ in me grows. It was pointing in the right direction. In other words, the egoic self uh, needs to no longer be the basis for who you think you are your identity. The, this, the personality is still there, can't get rid of it that easily. Personality is still there, but you discover there is more to you than that, much more. And it begins with, with a little glimpse, 
of that stillness that is and always has been there waiting to be discovered. So it's not that the awakening, if we call it this awakening to this deeper dimension, is not something that you need to achieve. If you think you need to achieve it, that will be the that which prevents that belief will prevent you from realizing it. If you see, I need to find this this higher self, this deeper self. Okay, I need to. From one day, I am going to find it if I just work hard enough. Uh, one day, I would. So you're you're projecting time. Time will eventually show me who I am in the depths of my being or my connectedness with God. So you're looking, many spiritual seekers are trapped in that error that time will eventually free you. But the truth is you cannot, the, the awakening is the realization of being I am. Ah, 